Hi guys, it's Justice here from Ramp Fitness. I'm here with Dan, and today we're gonna to work on the nine to five mobility series. It's a practical mobility circuit that's just gonna work on increasing your mobility from the feet all the way up. Something that you can take home, you could work on your own. We'll break it down for you so you can tie it all together and hopefully use it and be successful on your own. Ready to go, Dan? Absolutely. Great. All right, first position, we're gonna get Dan focusing on the ankles, get him into this kind of extra elongated dorsiflexion where he's gonna drop his heels down off the box and he's gonna raise up to his toes, engaging his calves. We're just trying to increase range of motion through the joint right here. We're not trying to push it to the limit. We're just going to the edge, see if he can get a little bit more mobile as we go, nice and comfortable up and down. We'll do about six to eight reps. From there, we'll just do a progression. We'll hold at the top and Dan will independently drop one heel down. So we'll raise up with two, down the one. And we'll go up with two, down the one, up with two. We can focus on our core, making sure we're not getting a shift now. And we'll drop down. Great. One more, increasing that range of motion, breathing comfortably. Great way to start that off, okay? Next progression, we're gonna get it a little bit more into the Achilles and the calf. So we're gonna do a rear leg, calf stretch. We're just gonna plant this rear leg, heel down on the floor. We're gonna to start to bring this knee forward. Working on our flexibility through the calf and the Achilles. A thing that we like to play around with here is our breathing. So as we push it to the edge, Dan's gonna go into a stretch. He's gonna stop and take a deep breath. And as he exhales, you can see if he can get that knee to track forward just a little bit more, that's great. And return back to that position, making sure we're getting that length through the calf and the Achilles is where we're sitting at our desk all day. That's one of the first places we lose our mobility and flexibility. And we wanna make sure we prevent injury when we get out and do dynamic movements. Right, so we got Dan here. We're putting it all together with everything we've worked with our ankle mobility and our, the relationship we're developing with our hips. So we're starting off with some heel taps. We're gonna be elevated here and Dan's just gonna start off by reaching down nice and easy, tapping his opposite heel to the floor. So his right heel is gonna tap the floor gently while he keeps his left heel engaged to the box. So we're working that stability through the joint as long as the mobility and flexibility through the Achilles and the calf. A couple things we're gonna look at is making sure this knee is just tracking over the toe. Maybe we feel a little bit of activation in the glute as well. From there, we're just gonna go into a multi-plane because when we're out there moving around, we're not always moving up and down. So Dan's gonna tap to the front, he's gonna tap out to the side, and then he's gonna tap behind, really engage the outside of that glute. Glute mean, we reach out, great tracking with the knee, reach out. And then if Dan wants to work his balance a little bit more, he'll not let his front his right foot touch the bench in between his reps. Great, and we're just gonna start to incorporate a little bit more into this left hip complex with the balance right there. Awesome. Great, got Dan here on the foam roller. We're gonna get into the hips a little bit. In particular, we're working the piriformis and the relationship with the calf and the ankle. This whole chain is all linked together what's going on in the hips can dictate what goes on in the ankles. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get crossover opposite ankle on the opposite knee and Dan's just gonna to start to find outside of his hip, glute med, piriformis area. We're gonna to roll till we find a trigger point and from there Dan is gonna use his hand to grab his foot and he's just gonna work into some ankle circles. And what we're doing is trying to just untie this chain Loosen up the outside of the calves while we're rolling out the piriformis. And then we'll work the opposite direction. Good, gaining mobility in the ankle, flexibility in the calf, and obviously loosening up the outside of the hip. Now, if we feel like reaching all the way up is a little bit of a stretch, a little bit difficult, we can go ahead and do those circles without using your hand, and you're still gonna get as much out of it as reaching with your hand. All right, we got Dan here in his seated position. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do this exercise called the shin box opener. One of my favorites. It's a great way to start to integrate the hips, some dynamic movement with the hips along with the ankles. Um, so what we're gonna do here is Dan is gonna go ahead and internally rotate his right 
leg, bringing his right foot in, externally rotate here on the left side, so his left knee is gonna be right there, kinda of like the instep of his left foot. Reach over with his left arm across, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna create this stretch, great, across the right side, outside of the hips. He'll kinda of start to unwind comfortably, straighten his legs out, and we'll repeat that on the other side. Internal, external, with the reach, great. And then one of our progressions we'll do is as you get a little bit more comfortable with this, we'll start to integrate a little bit more core. So Dan will not use his hands and he'll sit up, prayer his hands together, and he'll start to work through the same movement. A little bit of a rotation, come down. He'll bring those hands together again. He's bracing through the torso as he reaches through. And that's amazing. Great, and then the next progression that we'll go ahead and do is Dan will bend his knees, start in a 90 degree position, and he'll just let his legs fall to the right, knees bent, reach, prayer his hands together on his way up, and in all one movement, start to bend his way to the left, reach down. We're getting this great dynamic movement through the hips. And the last progression is he's going to keep his hands prayer the whole time as he pivots. So he's going to rotate his hips towards me, knees. There you go. He's going to keep his hands prayer, come up. And again, we're just integrating a little bit more core functionality through this dynamic movement. All right, so we've got Dan back here on the foam roller. We're going to get into the hamstrings right now. Um, again, with this nine to five, flow we're doing a lot of times we've been sitting a little bit those hamstrings might become an elongated state even though you feel a little bit tight we're going to go ahead and start to roll out the fascia tissue in the hamstring so we'll start off just with a couple long rolls we'll start to work our way up higher maybe an insertion point of the hamstring i'm going to let dan try to feel where he's feeling the most tight here if he finds any points where he needs to kind of slow down a little bit he will try to work out those trigger point areas. And we don't need to overdo this 15 or 20 seconds, making sure you're just kind of getting those spots that you really need to break down as far as the trigger points are concerned. All right, and from there, we're gonna take Dan into a supine position. We're gonna get into these quad pumps, something you'll hear us talk about here on the ramp podcast as well, is Dan's gonna go ahead and bring in his left knee and he's gonna just comfortably place his hands behind his thigh all right, we're making sure our shoulders are relaxed, head is down, good brace through the core, making sure I can't slide my hand too far underneath his back. And what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna start to lengthen that hamstring as he straightens his leg up, trying to flex the quad to get a little bit more length through the hamstring. Good, again, a lot of these things, we're just gonna kind of go right to the edge. We're not gonna overdo it. When we get to the top, we're gonna play with this ankle, see if, make sure we got some dorsiflexion going on really lengthening that whole line through the left side. We can come back to the top, we can mess around with our ankle position, get a little bit more of the outside of the hamstring, and we'll bring it down, up, slight internal rotation. Great, we'll go back down and then we can come back with a little external rotation. Perfect. And as we bring it down, we're just getting great length after we've kind of shut down those tight muscles in the hamstrings. Great, and as we move forward, this is something that I think is very important to do in the right order. We're gonna do some hip bridges. Um, so basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a ball, we're gonna insert it here in the hip flexor of the opposite leg. And we've just done all this work here on this left hamstring to lengthen it out. We wanna turn on that same glute muscle to make sure that that hamstring's not overworking. Because a lot of times when the hamstrings get a little bit overworked and tight, it's because the glutes aren't firing. So Dan's just gonna do it, take a deep breath, and on his exhale, he's gonna raise his hips up high to a five count, three, four, five, to lower nice and under control, take a deep inhale as well, and blow it up, blow your hips up to a five count, two, three, four, five. We're thinking about where we're getting our activation here. Dan should be feeling some activation in his glutes. Great. And we're gonna come up one more time. Exhale, and as we push, we lengthen out. I'm having him push his knee through my hands. We're gonna imagine getting this lengthening 
through the quad all the way through the hip flexor and we'll lower down nice and under control. This is something that you can cycle through numerous times, especially if you feel like you're getting a little bit too much activation in your hamstring while you're doing these bridges. What I would recommend is if you're feeling your hamstrings firing a lot during this exercise, start back over from the first exercise we did with the foam roller, roll out your hamstrings, do more quad pumps, and then come back to these bridges until we start to feel the activation in the glutes. All right, so we got Dan here in a half kneeling position, meaning we have one knee down on the floor, one foot in front. We're gonna work our way up to the hips. All right, we're gonna work in a little bit of the T-spine or thoracic spine. Um, first thing we're gonna start off is just some general mobility through the hips, a little flexibility through the planted quad leg. And Dan's just gonna do some nice easy rocks. One thing we're really focused on is keeping our shoulder, our hip, and our knee stacked. So Dan's gonna really focus on keeping this left glute turned on. What I mean by that is kind of bumping this left hip forward. Great. We're really gonna keep that turned on. Great core integrity, great alignment, ear, shoulder, hip, knee. Okay, from there we're gonna kind of mess around with the hip a little bit, so we're gonna incorporate some rotation. So our first progression here, Dan's just gonna go ahead and straighten his arms out, and he's gonna rotate over the front of his right leg. Feeling nice and easy. We're gonna rotate, and then Dan, have him take a deep breath here, rotate over, see if we can push that edge just a little bit more, get an exhale. Feel free to play with your breathing here. As you push those limits, you push it to the edge. Exhale, our next progression, as we move forward, he's still gonna rotate over that front leg. We're gonna rotate, and then he's gonna bring that right arm back, and he's gonna compress his right scapula, bring it back together, and rotate back forward. Deep breath, he's gonna open up. He's also gonna compress, and he's also gonna compress this left pec to really open up to engage our thoracic spine. One thing I wanna be looking at, as Dan does one more here, is I wanna be able to see his back as he rotates and comes back across. All right. Next progression here, we still have our knee, hip, and shoulder stack. We're gonna really integrate this thoracic spine. So Dan is gonna go ahead and compress his right shoulder blade as he reaches down with his right arm. And he's gonna extend through his left arm about a 45 degree angle as far as he can. Eyes are following as a natural athlete would do. We'll come back to the center area, take a deep inhale, we'll rotate. Exhale, as he tries to reach back, we're creating this 90 degree angle, left and right arm extending through the fascia line, inhale. And you can play around with your breathing again. So we'll have Dan hold here. I'll take another deep inhale in this position. And as he exhales, see if he can get just a little bit more. Great, Dan. And he'll come back to the middle. Awesome. Hey, so got Dan here. I've uh, been sitting on our desk, been talking about this nine to five mobility flow. Uh, we wanna work on getting those hips nice and dynamic. Um, getting them loose. We kind of started on the floor working our way up. Uh, so we got Dan in the quadruped position, which you can check out one of our videos um, at Ramp Fitness, where we'll go in a little bit deeper into that. But for right now, we're going to work on some dynamic hip mobility. Again, we're trying to get that mobility to hip from sitting all day. I'm going to get Dan back into a plank position or a push-up position. We just want to make sure from the start we're pretty sturdy. We're feeling pretty strong through the shoulders, through the hips. And what I'll do is I'll Dan, bring his right foot up forward, all right, right outside the hand where he feels comfortable. And what we're going to do here is we're just going to start some nice, easy hip drops. We'll call them hip drops. We're going to start to bring the left hip down towards the floor, getting that mobility through the hip. If we're feeling a little bit tight through the quad, I can let Dan bend his left knee a little bit as he drops right there. Great spine is nice and long, nice and comfortable as he breathes. Make sure on our right leg that our toes and our knees are in line. And from there, we're gonna progress it up. Dan's gonna come back up into that drop and we're just gonna do some circles. We'll start off clockwise with that right leg. So some nice mini about four inch circles. We're starting to incorporate the hip flexors on the left side, the adductor complex on the right side. Then we'll switch it back to a counterclockwise movement, other direction with our hips. Great, getting our groin nice and stretched out, incorporating both sides. And from there, we'll kick back to our plank position and we'll do a dynamic hip drop now. So we're gonna step, drop, 
So as we're going through our day, whether we're walking up and down the stairs, we're gonna go on a run, we're gonna do a workout, we need to be dynamic. We're not always just standing and stretching. We need to have some dynamic movements through the hips. Great. All right, so we're gonna finish off here. Dan, we got him upright. He's been at his desk all day. Got him through the 95 um, hip series. We're gonna start off with a lateral lunge. So Dan's gonna start off pretty wide. That way we can get a good range of motion and a good stretch through the adductors. And we call this a lateral lunge. So Dan's is going rock to his right and we'll kind of hold here for about a two or three count check positioning. Make sure we're feeling good stretch through the inside of the left leg. Maybe a little activation to the outside of his right hip. He's gonna drive through his heel, stand back to an upright position. We'll drop down to his left. We're looking at a couple things. We're making sure knee, toe, hips are aligned. That's great. Up. As he drops down, a little cue that you can think about is that right hip. Imagine there's a chair right there behind you. We have a chair here Dan is going to sit into as we come up. Don't feel the need to overcompensate too much through the chest. This is where that can lead to a little bit overactive movement through the lumbar spine, which we don't need. We can correct that later. Right now, we're just trying to be dynamic as we move laterally. For you weekend warriors out there who might be out there playing a sport, you want to make sure that you're able to move side to side. It's another benefit with this rocking lateral lunge. We'll do one more on each side. Driving that right knee back to engage that right adductor and we're up to the top. Great. Hey guys, got Dan here on the foam roller. Right, with our nine to five, we've been talking about mobilizing from the ground up. So we started here with the ankles, moved up the hamstrings into the hips. Now we're gonna get into that thoracic spine, the shoulder blades, all right, the T-spine. The, one of the main things we think about when we think about posture, we're sitting at a desk. First thing we want to do is get down here on a foam roller, work some soft tissue work, start to loosen up the fascia through the rhomboids, through his thoracic spine. So Dan's just going to start off with some nice, easy thoracic crunches, just a little top half. Hips are relaxed, all right? We don't need a ton of engagement or integrity through the core. We're just really trying to get the fascia lines loosened up. So as Dan works through there, we're gonna to start to raise our arms up and we're gonna to start to work that overhead mobility. And we're gonna alternate, drop one arm down nice and easy. Again, make sure we're keeping that integrity through the core, make sure our lower back isn't arching. And one thing we talked about before is we just wanna go right to the edge, all right? We don't need to push it, so we'll hold. Great range of motion. What I'll have Dan do here is he's gonna hold there, he's gonna take a deep inhale. And as he exhales, you see if he can get a little bit more degrees of range of motion on that right arm. As he exhales, good, we'll come back to the other side. Our next progression, we'll lock those fingers together, close the chain up a little bit, see if we're ready for it. And again, Dan's just comfortably going in that overhead position, keeping that lower back out of it. Great, we'll do one more deep inhale. We're gonna test, take one more inhale, Dan. As he inhales, maybe you can get a little bit more on the exhale. Yeah, great, comes up. Perfect, and right there we're gonna just progress into rolling out those individual lats, getting into the individual rotator cuff area. A lot of us are asymmetrical, we're not even on both sides, so we're gonna to start to work these independently. We'll get Dan into this lat position where he's finding a trigger point on his lat, upper rib cage area. Right now you can see Dan's kind of feeling it out, making sure he's on his trigger point. From there we're gonna go into some active movements we're gonna call these snow angels. Dan's gonna go ahead and just drag his fingers down. Give me a thumbs down on the way up. He's gonna give me a big thumbs up. We're just working that range of motion. Thumbs down, give me a thumbs down and then thumbs up. All right, and right now we're kind of inhibited here at the top. So again, we can kind of push that limit each time we go. We take a deeper inhale, work on that diaphragm breathing as we exhale. There we go, we get up to the top from being in that crunched over position, so those lats tend to raise up, which can limit our overhead position, which can limit a lot of movements that we wanna do. And we'll do one more, exhale. Great. All right, so we're gonna move on to working some mobility through the thoracic spine. Uh, first thing we're gonna work on with Dan is starting in this quadruped position. I'm having him rock back into his hips just to load them up a little bit 
and just to kind of challenge him to stay in a good position so he's not floating too far forward um, into his shoulders. First thing we're gonna do is gonna take his right hand behind his head, nice and gentle, and then we're gonna work elbow to elbow. Right elbow is gonna drop into the left elbow, and as we open up, we're gonna exhale, and being an athlete, like we talked about, he's gonna try to find that elbow, let your eyes find, follow where we're going. Squeezing right here through the scap, also compressing right here through that left hand, keeping that active as we stay low in the hips. That's awesome. Dan is now going to thread the needle with his right arm. So now we're going to start to work that range of motion. Stretch, compress. He's going to thread the needle. Elbow drives to the ceiling, hand to the rib cage. As you can see, he's gaining his range of motion. A great progression here is we're going to a long lever now. So he's going to be challenged to control his whole arm pointing his thumb back, engaging the shoulder blades, scapula together, staying active in this arm, staying low in the hips. Great, and as we increase that range of motion, you see him bend his left arm. He's able to get more range of motion, more stretch, more range of motion each way. We wanna floss that joint out, not just work one direction. Now we're gonna work with our back scratcher. And Dan's just gonna go ahead and reach out right in front with his right arm like he's gonna shake a hand. And we'll kind of hold that, fingers nice and wide. And from there, he's just gonna do a nice arc, bring it back to his back like he's gonna scratch his back. And he's gonna reach back over, he's gonna shake that hand again, place his right hand down on the floor. And then he's gonna open up. And we'll have him do another one where he's gonna reach his eyes are going to follow his hand to increase that range of motion. There we go. Our lumbar spine is not engaged. Thoracic spine is working with its mobility. We're engaging all the way down. Thoracic spine isn't just the top of your shoulder blades. Last one, full range of motion. Reach back. And there's a great progression for your thoracic spine mobility. Great, we're gonna finish this off today. We got Dan in the prone position. We're just gonna kind of tie everything into place that we did with the shoulder blades. Started off with some foam rolling to increase the mobility, some team spine openers as well. Now we're gonna kind of lock everything into place. A Little bit of strengthening aspect with this flow in this series. So first thing we're gonna do is make sure the toes are down. All right, we're nice and comfortable in the pelvis. Make sure Dan's just gonna slightly push his pelvis into the floor. Not too much engagement, but enough to keep it out of his lower back. The first thing we're gonna do is start off with a little bit of a, a cobra press. Well, Dan's just gonna slide the hands off the floor. We're getting a nice squeeze here. We're gonna tuck the chin down to keep the spine long. And he's gonna return to that position. And all we're thinking about is, again, tying everything together. We're getting that mobility through the scapula. If you notice, as the scapula raises, that's gonna raise his chest off the floor. Go ahead and reach back out. And we're gonna run through about four or five of these. Notice how his scapula is pinching together is what's raising him off the floor. It's not his lumbar spine. All right, so we got a lot of ton of mobility through the thoracic spine. And we'll hold, you can play around with your holds here if you wanna hold a little bit longer, get a little bit of that shaky feeling, making sure we're engaging those muscles that we need, we'll reach back out. All right, and as we progress this, we'll increase our long lever so we open up a little bit more. So Dan's just gonna kinda open up, we call these our swimmers. And as Dan opens, just a little bit more challenging on the complex because the levers are longer, so a little bit more work expected throughout the thoracic spine. Notice how he's staying out of his lower back and he's keeping his spine long through the range of motion. Now, if we find that we can't stay out of our lower back or we can't get as much engagement here, that's okay. We'll go into a sphinx pose, which is a very comfortable position where Dan's just gonna slide his elbows under his shoulders. All right, and nice and comfortable through the lumbar spine, through the hips. And then we're gonna play with a little bit of engagement right here. And we can relax, we can activate this. If that's too much, we can just hold here because we are engaging. We're getting a little isometric hold, little strengthening aspect that's gonna keep those tied into place from all the previous mobility work we've done. Great guys, so we're finishing off the 95 mobility series. Got Dan standing up right now, been sitting all day. 
feeling good, worked our way from the ground up. We're gonna finish off with a full body exercise where we're gonna kinda encompass everything that we worked on today, starting with the ankles, hamstrings, thoracic spine, and then ultimately a big global movement, a squat, which is essential for all of us to be able to execute. All right, we like to call this the five point squat, where we're gonna start off with a hinge. So Dan's gonna feel his weight back in his heels as he sits back to build this tension. That's gonna be one. You're probably gonna feel the hamstring stretch. Two, we're gonna drop down into a squat. Again, we wanna make sure we got our tripod, pinky toe, big toe, heel, make sure that they're all screwed into the floor. So Dan could even cheat a little bit and rock back a little, great, to build that tension. Three, he's gonna prayer his hands together and slightly push his knees out to stretch out the adductors, get the outside glute knee, glutes fired up. Four, double arm raise, squeezing the tips of the shoulder blades together, all right? Depending on how you feel mobility-wise, it might not look like this. You'll loosen up as you go. Five, Dan's gonna stand up out of his squat into a victory pose, okay? Again, this is mobility, so you'll feel yourself get better, get more mobile as you go. So again, push it to the edge, maybe not the limit. One, hinge, weight in the back of the heels. Two, sit. Three, push the knees out. Four, we're engaging shoulder blades. We're up five, and once you feel good, we'll start to flow through it. I'll count it off for Dan. One, two, three, four, up. In your head, you can pick your tempo up. One, two, three, four, five. Great progression there, standing up, victory pose. Great way to end your day. Hey guys, thanks for watching the Ramp 9 to 5 series. Hope you were able to take away some things that are going to help you with your nine to five. Anything, any little jewels you're able to take, we hope you're able to incorporate those into your workouts. They're going to make you feel a lot better as you progress in your fitness journey. Dan, how you feel? I feel great. I love the whole order of it, really from top to bottom. I really feel dialed in, tied together. Great. Guys, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. We're going to have a lot more content, so feel free to keep searching for us. Also, too, if you have questions, Drop them in there. We'll be happy to help you out. Have a good day.